Okay, so a media creation uh, for your site. Now, this is something that's sometimes overlooked, and I don't want to just jump straight in because this is a very structured workshop series. We started the first week um, by sort of running through what we're going to do, which is like to build on what we've done the week before. Uh, our goal is to get a site and a course and talk about membership sites and talk about funnels and literally every single part of Zenla. So it does build on, on the one before. Uh, but it's really important that you actually register, that you're actually in the course that's associated with it. So this has all been set up. And I'm going to just post that into the chat. So in case you guys are not in here, because I'm going to jump quickly to the course just to show you what you kind of get, because it's the place where you go to pick up any downloads that might be issued with the workshop and also to see that replay. So if you do miss a week for any reason, because, you know, your lives get in the way, you can catch up on that on that one and then you can ask questions later now also with this group there is also a community area so if again if you miss a live or you just want to ask a question you can pop into the community area of the course and then you can ask a question related to the workshop that we've just previously done make sure that you're on topic with your questions don't start asking things like funnels you know how do i do a funnel and all those things because we haven't got to that workshop so make sure it's actually on the workshops we've previously done as opposed to just general questions or help questions that sort of thing because that way it keeps everything on track and people don't get confused inside the community so i'm going to quickly just jump into before we start the media creation for your site i'm going to jump in and just show you where the course is i put it into the chat there and i just want to walk you through it just say so crystal clear so when you go to that url you're going to go here and uh, this is join us for free because obviously it's free everything we do is free and then once you're actually inside the course itself you're going to see this and you're going to easily be able to book for the next live session Okay, so you'll get an email and those things. We don't send out replays because they're inside the course. So when you're inside this course here, you can see all the recordings we've done. So you can see we did a tour of Zenla. That was our first one. And our second one here is was recorded last week, and that was planning your site or course. And you've got extra resources as well. So if I've talked about any videos related to what I'm talking about in that workshop, that's where they appear. So if I just jump into this quickly, you're going to see the video inside the curriculum area and uh, you can watch that and then you can go to the next lesson which will be this one here and you can see you can download that week's um, pdf that i show and you can also see any related videos so related video last week was the branding blitz with ian so for your convenience i put it in there that is actually part of our branding and design course but i'm going to put the videos into the actual thing so that means you haven't got to search around um, you can just find it all in there so it's all done for your convenience so the next videos to come out these will not be in there at the moment but as soon as this live finishes i will unpublish these although i'll need a day to upload the video from this replay into this area but i'm going to be releasing this one after this workshop and this is what happened week to week so every time i run one i'll open that section up so you won't see it inside the actual um, curriculum it's set inside the, the access page uh, because it's put to draft i can see it here because i am admin so i will release that when it's open so back to the curriculum so that's where you need to go and like I said, it's really important that you register for those lives. Um, if you can't watch them or you can't attend or you didn't register, then just make sure that you click down here. And then down here is I'm telling you that there is a community to go with this. And also you can um, get ready. So have a pen and paper and all the usual things that you would do. All right. So with that done, we're going to start the media creation for your site. So media creation for your site, obviously, if you have a site and you just have text, it's very boring, very bland. If you don't have any colors, it's even worse. And obviously, if you have a really rubbish font in there, it will look even worse. So making your site colorful or following a kind of feel that you want is really important. We talked about branding last week, so I'm not going to go on about that. But there are certain things in this workshop that um, I'm going to make your life so much easier. There's lots of questions come on the Facebook group saying, what size do I need this? What size do I need that? By the end of this workshop, you'll just have two things to remember. 
okay <laughs> that's it so um it's the way that i work with the system i find it, it's good i don't have to remember all these funny sizes for like course cards you know oh what size am i going to put that in what size am i going to do that um a couple of things and you'll be you'll be fine so we're just going to quickly look at what we did last week just going to close the course thing down here and we're going to have a look at the what we, what we did last week and a quick recap so let me just present this i'm doing this inside of canva by the way and we'll be using canva in a minute so last week we looked at branding so we set our colors so hopefully you guys i don't know if you have if you want to put in the chat that you've actually done the homework that was given to you last week that would be really good and also put down if you haven't as well okay not that i'm going to name and shame you but you know it's good to know who's trying to keep up with what we're trying to achieve here so obviously i put this branding sheet together and we are covering media creation today so i'm going to show you how to quickly do this kind of thing so if you're like well i couldn't do that because i didn't know how to do it then we're going to cover that don't worry but this is a simple brand sheet it means that i can download it as a pdf you know you picked that pdf up last week and you can see all your colors in there and you know what everything is and it makes it really easy to move forward because you can say right i want to use that color in that page and I'll, I'll stick to the same color in that page and you know exactly where everything is you know the fonts you're using and the sizes you're using you know we covered all this last week so um so this is really important thing to have because it gives you guidance going through so the next thing we did was um look at setting up a logo so if you get someone else to do it for you or you want to create it yourself then that is important as well and to have those colors associated with it so then we just worked on all the rest of the stuff so i'm not going to go through all of this it's just a quick recap so we're going to go and we're going to move on to what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to start with media creation for your site. If you're not a designer and not used to creating any kind of media for your site, including images, call to actions, memes, or even videos, then it could be overwhelming for you in this workshop. We will look at free resources for you to use to help you create something a bit special. During the presentation, or I've put orientation, uh, I will be offering you top tips. Uh, this workshop builds on the one before, so make sure you watch them in sequence to avoid frustration. So what we will do in this workshop, we're going to look at Canva for creating custom images and sizes to use. OK, this can be really important because we're going to give you key sizes. We're also going to get a little bit more creative in pixel art. Uh, we're going to find free images sources via Pixabay and extra settings that you can use with Pixabay. Uh, we will create a simple logo in Canva. These might not be in order, by the way. Uh, we will remove the background color in pixel art and add a colored overlay. In the site, we will build, and we're gonna be working on our site today, guys. So this is kind of your homework for next week. Get that page up. Some of you I know, I know Mina, for instance, has her site being built and it's all public at the moment. So all of her pages and things are all public. So creating a holding page, or some people call it a maintenance page, you know, or it's coming soon page. You'll have your site with a page that people can look at that looks nice, but it means in the background, you can be, you know, creating your real site. And then when you're, when you're happy with it all, you can do the switch. And you can switch it over to live so it's a way of getting the site ready and um, or having something up where people can register and show their interest but it's not a fully working site yet yeah it's almost like a landing page for them so we're going to be doing that today very simple one we're not going to go too mad so you should all be able to do this um, especially if you're new and uh, i suggest mean that you do this as well because i know you're working on your site all right so this is what we're doing today so any questions on any questions so far right so i did the work yeah so a lot of, oh good like first week we'll catch up <laughs> right yeah it's um you know it's up to you if you can keep up with me and keep going then you're going to be you're going to have results at the end of each 
each module you know each workshop we do you're gonna you're gonna be up to that stage and ready to move on and when we start you know once we've created the site the site's done and when we get on to doing the courses the courses are done but if you can get the site done and get up to that stage then you're ready to work on the course sections and then we move into more advanced stuff which you can then implement so we're taking it a stage so today is the media creation so i'm going to just close that canva thing down and uh, that PDF will be available inside of the course. All right. So I'm not going to put it into the chat like I did last week. It's going to go into the course. So let me just close that down and jump into our site. All right. So this is our site. I've cleared it all out. It's fresh. This is what it looks like. If you've just signed up, this is what your site will look like. So you can see we are in demo.newzenla.com and you can see it just it's all open, but I haven't filled anything out. So this is not this is not my we're going to do a dog training site. And if if you click around to these areas, um, I am logged in, by the way, so some of this won't be available. Um, but if you click around into these areas, there isn't any information in there. So it would be good to have a page that's a holding page that will just hold all this stuff. Um, so our first part of the media creation is Zenla actually connects up to Pixabay. So if you haven't gone into Pixabay and set an account up, I'm going to tell you why you might want to not just pull them in by searching in the site. You might want to go to Pixabay directly and download an image. And why? Because you can choose the download size. You can also choose more advanced options. And you can also then have that image at high resolution downloaded into your folder that you should have set up from last week as part of the homework. So I have my little folder here and I have a little folder inside here called images. So I can put all my images in there and easily find them. So why would I download a high res image? Well, I might download a high res image because I want to crop it. You know, I might want to cut out lots of the stuff at the side. I might want to put a colored overlay over the top, multicolored overlay. You know, I might want to do a montage of different images in there. So by having the source files on my computer, it makes it flexible. This is the way I work. Lots of people just grab them in the site. So remember, Zenla is connected to the Pixabay library, but you don't have extra options that I'm going to go into. So Pixabay, having a Pixabay account is a really good idea. It's free. So you can just go on there and free. And I'll just um, put that into the chat here. So I'm going to get on to questions later, guys. If you're putting questions in now, I'm going to run through this presentation first because it's important. So that is the Pixabay account for grabbing the free images that we're going to be doing in this um, course. Now, I'm not going to be doing real a lot of um, editing and well, work in this because I've actually put a lesson under the video that you'll see when I open it up. And that tells you about how to use things like Pixlr, Pixabay and Canva inside that lesson anyway. But I'm going to touch on it. I'm going to create a logo and a branding sheet in Canva. So. That is a Pixabay and that is connected. Now I'm going to jump into the account and show you just how it is connected to it. So if we go back to here and I jump into my site, here we go. I'm going to go to site. I'm going to go to pages. Okay. And we have our set pages down there. But what I'm going to do for testing purposes, just to play around in the site, is I'm going to add a test page. So I'm going to click here, add a page. Now, I'm not going to publish the page. I'm going to keep it unpublished. And I'm going to go and call this a mess about, you know, <laughs> something like that. And we go just call it a mess. I'm going to delete this page out. Just We're just playing around. So if I click add to that, you can see that that page has now been added. And it'll open up in the editor. Now, we are working on speeding up the way the editor loads. You've probably heard about it on the Facebook group. We're, load, we're upgrading to a new page builder, page builder 2.0, and that will be a lot quicker and there'll be more templates and things. So now I'm in the editor for the page. So if I go into here and I click, let's just go in and add a row first of all. 
And then I'm just going to go in here and add an element, which is going to be an image element there. You're going to see up the top here, we haven't got any images in here. There's nothing in here at the moment. Now I could upload from my computer. So if I went to Pixabay, downloaded an image, I could just upload it straight into here. But you're going to see here, look, by Pixabay. So if I put in here something like dog, because it's going to be a doggy site, and then I click, I hit the enter, we're going to get images that are pulled in from Pixabay. So you can grab images and lots of people do. And I do myself sometimes is you can grab an image and you can just go, OK, I like that image. It gives you a little crop as well. So you could go in and crop this inside here. This could save you cropping outside or you can go insert without crop. So if I wanted to say that's a nice little crop, I could go crop and insert and bang, it will appear inside my site there. So it's connected to Pixabay but I've got no real control over the size I'm downloading. If we go into Pixabay itself and I go in here and click and enter dog, um, I will get that same image. Notice same image comes up because it's accessing the same image bank. Uh, if I go in and I click this image, I can go free download and I can choose what size I want to download. So write this down. Biggest tip, if you're doing an image, and you're downloading it from Pixabay, always pick a size over as well, basically the largest size that you can get. OK, uh, why? Two reasons. One is it's better to work and edit a bigger image than it is a smaller image. OK, and when you're working professionally, if I'm doing image editing, if something's going out for print, I work on an image twice the size of the print image. Um, because then I can, when I reduce it down, it's not going to lose any quality. If I was to pick an image like this, 640 by 426, which is roughly about that kind of size, um, on screen, if I made it bigger, it would go all blurry. So large is better. These are JPEGs. It's only 2.2 megabytes, very small. So when you're in Pixabay, my big tip is download the biggest image you can. Don't exceed more than 6,000 though, okay? So you've got that thing. Biggest image, but don't go bigger than 6,000. That's all you need to write. Write that down, it's really important. I will be putting that into the PDF as well. So that is for background images. And when I mean background images, I mean not these kind of images, which by the way, you can resize in here, uh, more for this big background area here. Uh, if I click the gear icon and we put a background image in that block, remember you can put colors in here, yeah? But we can also go in here and put images in here. So if I select that same image there, that image there is 1280 by 728. And that's the image I get. So let me just delete that out so you can see. And it's nice and clear, yeah? So you can see that little dog in there, like that, looks quite nice. Could be looking up at the writing. So when you're looking at these images, think, what am I going to do with that image? Do I want him looking up at the writing? That would work. So big image for these big background images, OK? For the in-page inside, just adding an image in there. Again, you can go, you can go for big image, because when you upload, then the Zender system will reduce the size down automatically. You don't have to worry about it. So for any other things, like things like course cards, I always go for, I always output for page sizes at 1920 by 1080. That is 1920 by 1080 is video size. So it's HD video size. So guys, you probably are producing videos. So what does this do? This means that if you are producing an image at 1920 by 1080, and I'm going to add this to the chat, for course cards and videos and page images use 1920 by 1080 1080 height this is pixels by using that size it will be in pro with everything you're doing it will be in pro for any course cards that you create for courses that we're going to do later in the in the coming up workshops it's going to be in pro for any videos you use because hopefully they're going to be in hd they should be in hd 
Um, so you don't have to worry about anything. So you've got different sizes in on your site. So if I go into here now, I'm just going to quickly set up a course up. Um, I'm going to be deleting this out, just going to do this for testing purposes. So create course. OK, so um, coming to the course details, look in here, it says 860 by 480. So you've got to remember that. Then you go and you upload a video into your media library and then you can change the thumbnail for it. So then it's going to say, oh, do you want to upload your own custom thumbnail for that image? So use 1920 by 1080. So you're like, well, I've got that size. I've got this size. I don't know what size images to use in my page for standalone images. And you, it can get confusing. So the biggest tip is use 1920 by 1080 because 1920 by 1080 is relative or pro in size to 860 by 480. So I can use that. And if I just go and change this, I'm going to grab an image that's 1920 by 1080. Uh, I haven't got one in here. Uh, let me, well, we'll do one in a second because we'll be going into Canva. So that's the biggest thing you need to know. So I'm going to put that, I'll put that image in there in a second. Um, you can, of course, go in here and add an image from here as well. So have I got one in here, dog training? No, we'll come back to that. So that is the size you need to remember, 1920 by 1080. But any big background images, and that's that big background stuff going on behind the back, this huge images, right? You want to use the big sizes inside of uh, Pixabay. If you're doing it internally, so you're using uh, Zendler's internals add, add to page, then you don't have to worry about that. You can just pick it from there. But if you're taking an image of Pixabay because you want to edit it that we're going to be doing later, then you want to pick a big image and then you can play around with it. OK, so that's the key size, 1920 by 1080. If you're doing any big backgrounds, then you need to make sure you're choosing an image that's really big. Otherwise, it will go all blurry. And I'll be demonstrating that now. I'm going to go and grab this image and I'm going to download it at 640 by 426. So I'm downloading it. You're going to see it's going to appear down here. This is from Pixabay. I'm going to go into my downloads folder. Here it is, that's the image. And this is the image full size. So see how small it is? That's the image full size. Right, obviously a lot smaller than the size of this here. So let's have a look how it looks when I upload it. So I'm gonna go into here now, and this is something I see people do all the time. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna go upload, we're going to pick that other one that I just downloaded. It's in my download folder. There it is. And I'm going to click open and I'm going to go upload without crop. And look how blurry it is. Do you see that, guys? Right now, I've seen people use like 300 pixels. That's half of this and upload it and go, oh, it's all blurry, it's all over the place. And that's because it's so small. So what the system is doing is it's stretching it. It's like you zooming really close in and it just pixelates around the outside. So if you look at what we had before, which is lovely and sharp, and what we have now, if we go back forwards, yeah, you can see the difference. So that is why when we're actually downloading from Pixabay, we wanna choose a really nice big image. OK, when you're actually in the system and using the search, it will upload the biggest it needs for that page. Because remember, Zendler will resize it. So if if you've got a small image, it will kind of resize it big and blur it. So you need a big image so that it resizes it down and it still say it stays nice and sharp. So that is a key tip for you there, guys. OK, the difference is massive between the two. So that is Pixabay there. So you want to be downloading high quality images. So you'll put those in your all in your folders. So I'm going to delete that one out. I'm just going to do a free download again. I'm going to pick the high one. I'm going to click download. That's going to appear in my downloads folder there. Get a nice big image now, look, huge. So open up my dog training. 
going to go images and I'm going to copy that one in there. So what I'm doing effectively is building up a library of assets that I might use, I might not use. And you can play around and just think, oh, that image looks nice. I'll put it in there. So what else can we do with Pixabay? Well, Pixabay is really good because we also have this other function of being able to ask it to, to cut out images or give me images that have cutouts. So a cutout image would be, I think this is cut out. This would be something, it would mean that the background is all transparent so you can put it on to different different color different colored backgrounds or even background images so i'm going to show you that now when you go into the search and this is not available inside of zen you don't have the ability to search on different things but inside here you do so you could say larger than you can make sure your images that you're seeing in the search window are larger than a thousand pixels, for instance, and click go, and it would filter out all the larger ones. Most are anyway. And the other one down here is really good, is category, is color. And this is transparent. So transparent will cut out the background. It'll only give us images that are cut out. So if I click in here and I click go, you're gonna see all these images inside here are all cut out. So like the dog there, these nice sort of cartoony dogs. And let's choose one of these. Some of them are not cut out very well, I must admit, but uh, that's by the by, it's all free content. So let's go and grab this little dog here, which looks quite funny. So you can see it's like a checker in the background. That means it's transparent. And I'm gonna do a free download of that. Now, I don't need to have it that big I'm going to download it to like that because remember it's a page image. It's not, I'm saying to you 19, 20, 10, 80. <clears throat> when you start to do more of this, you'll be like, oh, I don't need to go that big. That's going to be fine. So you can choose. But if you see this vector SVG file, if you don't know what that is, don't download it. Okay, it's called a smart vector file and it's for opening up in other applications. You want to be looking at for transparent background colors it will probably be in the format called .png file, okay? Just like your images are in JPEG, yeah, there. And these are .png files. It just means they carry what's called an alpha, and that is an extra channel of information in the file that cuts out the background, okay? That's all you need to know about it. So I'm going to download this really big one here, and I'm going to click download. That will download into my download folder and we're going to upload it and you're going to see what I mean by what you can do with it. There it is. Notice.png. Let's put that in there and pull those across to the other screen. Okay, jump back to the site going to come into here and I'm going to go add an element and this time I'm going to add an image and we're going to upload that little guy which is on my desktop there he is click open I'm going to crop it as well I don't need all that info actually let's just upload without crop just in case it cuts his ear off Okay, and there he is. So he is now cut out on the surface through there like that. And you can go along and you could change the background and you've got him nicely cut out. Now, ideally, you know, if you can do this stuff yourself, like cutting images out and stuff, it gives you a lot more flexibility. But um, a lot of guys, a lot of you guys are not designers and things, so you can do things like that. You know, you can go and randomly change the color around and he's going to look good on that surface. So that's how you can use Pixabay and you can grab those images in there and you can do that filter. So you can go through here. There are other things you can do as well inside of here. You have the ability to choose different types. So I can clear the filters and go to maybe I just want vector graphics. So if you, if you know what vector graphics is, you might be searching for vector graphics. Maybe you want kind of illustrations. Maybe you're looking for video. 
So you can go into illustrations here. It's going to give you all illustrations of dogs. So this way of searching for different things in here is really good. Gives you this ability to check through the categories as well. Do a search up here and then download the size you want. So this is a really nice. That's obviously transparent and I can download that. I'd probably download this at 1280 or something. I know I said to you 1920, but 1280 is still going to be a fair. This is what I mean. When you get used to how big the size is, you can kind of make a judgment call because you can say, right, OK, I know that that's roughly about that big. So that's the size I'm going to download. So for images in page images, I'm not talking about backgrounds. That's that's big images. So you can download that and you can play around with it. So what if I want to do something a little bit special with an image? So I wanted to take this image here and I wanted to kind of put an overlay, different colored overlay or play around with uh, special effects with this guy. Well, we can do that. We can use a program called um, Pixel R to do that, that we're going to be looking at. So inside the site itself, I'm going to go back a couple here and I'm just going to show you how you can set an overlay for your your background image so we have the background image in there and this is the blurry one but don't worry if we click the gear icon we can come over here and you're going to see that we added a background image in there but under here we've got a background overlay if i click this and then i select a color like red it gives an overlay so we can put an overlay now this is really good if you've got an image like this that uses a lot of black, uses a lot of lighter colors, and you're putting like white text on there, your text might not show up. So you could use a slight overlay to make it show up. So if I just show you that in action, then it will be clear. Let me just grab a heading. Let's make that heading white. So you can see there, I can't really see that text because it's really kind of against another color. So if I did an overlay of a darker color, it's going to push it through. So if I go in and I grab an overlay of black and then I just change this slightly like that, now it's clear. So overlays are really good. But if I wanted to add a multicolored overlay, I could, and I could use a program to do that. So I could download the image from uh, Pixabay, like I've done, and then I could use a program called PixelR to actually put an overlay behind it. So here is PixelR here. Again, this is another free program. And guys, you know, if this is too much for you, just stick with the stuff I've talked about previously. I'm going into more editing now. So pixel R, I'm going to put that in the chat. Right, and I'm going to answer questions later. Just going to carry on with this for now. Uh, yeah, so inside pixel R here, if we go to, I always use the advanced editor. I haven't really used the quick and easy. Maybe that's good. I don't think it'll have all the options I want. But if I go into here, then it's going to say open an image. And this is the closest thing I found to the application that I use every day, which is Photoshop. So this is why I've picked Pixel R. So if I click open, um, we can go and find our image and I can click open. And I'm going to just leave it the same as it was. You could use that, but I'm going to leave it and click apply. There's the image. So how's our image in there now this gives us a lot of flexibility say right there's my image what do i do with it well this is where you can just have a play and this is where the video that you'll see when you look in the lesson afterwards when i open that workshop up that's all about media creation and, and i do some jazzy things inside pixel art uh, so i'm going to uh, see if i can do something in here now i'm going to go down there's our image now what happens in pixel art works as a stacking order so you can put an image at the bottom and you can put images over the top and you can also change the order so you you'll see it it's easier to show it's like a piece it's like a piece of paper and then putting tracing paper over the top so if i go in here and i click and click an empty layer you're going to see a little empty layer has appeared there 
And by selecting here, this is the active layer that I'm working on. So if I went into our little brush here, and I'm gonna just press the control and minus key, control, hold the control, control, prep the minus key and you'll zoom out. So I have red selected. Now I'm not sure, I can change the size here. So I'm gonna go and start to do some colors. It's a little bit sluggish because it's online and I'm running the screen sharing and um, recording software. So sorry guys, it is a bit sluggish for my system, but this is an online program. So I'm gonna choose different colors. Did you notice there when I went across, I just picked very slow. I just went across to change the color by selecting here. And then I can sort of pull this through different colors and move this around. I can get a new color. So you can get some really cool effects with this. Now at the moment, you're like, what are you doing? Are you crazy? That looks terrible. But trust me in a minute, when I apply a layer type to the top, it will be good. So, <laughs> so over here, I'm right hand clicking this little layer two, and I'm gonna go blending mode. So you can set blending modes to do different things. Some of them are like, if it's a darker color, don't show. If it's a lighter color, show. It's all these kind of things. So I'm gonna choose blend mode here. And if we start playing around with these, I'm gonna put it on overlay. You're gonna see that we've changed our image. We've got this new kind of like whew, um, neon type effect going on. There's loads of different blend modes that you can pick. This is a lighter one and they're all for different purposes. I quite like um, overlay with this one or soft light is quite nice as well. So it adds that kind of soft light. Um, and these are just adding extra things on top. So I'm gonna click overlay. So you can have a real lot of fun with this guys. You know, now I've got this blending mode set to overlay. I can go into here and I can, I can actually just add it straight in. So I can just click okay, because I've got an orange now. And when I start to put this in here now, Initially, it won't change, but when I finish the stroke, somehow, it changes, the overlay takes effect. So you see how that, you can get a really cool effect in there just by playing around. So what I said, I mean, there's a lot more to pixel art. You can do a lot of things in there, um, but you, the main thing is you can have fun with your images. So I've now created something really custom from something I got from Pixabay. You know, I'm making it my own. Now, remember also, you can add stuff on top. So I can add another empty layer on top, and then maybe I want to fill it, and there's a fill button here with a black. So if I click fill, right, it's black because it's the top layer. If I moved it down here, it wouldn't be the top layer. So you can drag these little layers around and I'm gonna go into here and I think I can, and by the way, guys, I'm not um, expert in pixel art, but if I right hand click again, I can change the opacity to this and I should have it shown through. So now I've added that overlay to it so that my text, if it's white, will show up. So once I've done that and I've played around, I can then go over and I can save this image out. So I can come into here and I can click into save and it will say JPEG. It basically does it all for you guys. So you can just choose like high in here, JPEG, leave it on the defaults, generally it works and you click save as and it will save it um, and I'll put it into my dog training. So I'll call him here and I'll call this a version two and click save. Okay, so if we look in our little folder now, we have this new version. Okay, now before you ask, because there'll probably be some questions in the chat, can I add text into here? Yeah, you could put text into here and you might do that on occasion, but try to stay away from putting text into an image uh, when you're using an image like for a big background, right? Because the reason being is that we want to make sure there's as much live text 
not text that's embedded into an image on the site as possible. The reason being is that it resizes nicely. And also the search engines can pick up on those keywords that you've used. If you put it inside an image, they will not. It's This is a, another question that comes up on the Facebook group as well. I, my image is looking funny, the text in it's not visible. And it's because the image will reduce down and the text reduces in pro to that image. So when you're on a mobile, you can't read the text because you've put the text in there and it's reduced the whole image down. Now, if you use live text or inputted text using the Zen, the system, the text will remain at that large size. So you'll even see it on mobile devices. You'll see this later on. I'm sure there'll be some questions come up. So that's how you can use Pixel R. So this is definitely a program you want to play around with because you could create some really stunning things. And we're actually going to jump back into Pixel R because I'm going to show you how you can create a logo in Canva now and, and how to get rid of the background in Canva. Now, by default, you can get rid of a background in Canva if you've got a paid version of Canva, but we're using a free version of Canva. And I'm going to show you how to remove the background using pixel art with the free version of Canva. So next thing I'm going to do is just upload this image into the site just to show you. So let's we've output it from pixel art. You just saw that. I'm going to go in here and just going to quickly upload this now. So where is it? This is not the one I'm going to use, by the way. I'm just using it for a test. So I've got that image up there. I'm going to upload without crop. And bang, our image is going to go in there. And we've got this lovely color going on. You can see how, how it can look. Now, I haven't got to use anything like an overlay on this. I've got the overlay on, but I could turn that off because I added the overlay inside of Pixel R. Yeah, so you could add that. You might not want to add it. You might want to add the overlay inside here. I could still add an overlay. I could add an overlay and choose a completely different color, like, um, like an orange or something, you know, to give it another look and feel. So you can see how quickly you can generate like, your own style of things just by playing around. You saw how quick that was to do. So now let's jump into Canva and see how Canva can be used for creating logos and things like branding sheets. So next program we need to look at, and I'm using the free version here. So you guys don't have to have the paid version. If you've got the paid version, you'll be able to do things like output an image without any background. Um, the free version doesn't do that. And there's a few other things that you can do with the paid version of Canva. But I'm showing for this presentation, I'm showing the free version just because I want everybody to be able to use it. So that is Canva there. So if you've never used it before, you're going to love this. Loads of our instructors use Canva. So let's start with a branding sheet, right? We don't want to confuse ourselves. You could do a branding sheet at any size you wanted to. You could do A4 here. You've got create blank, create blank, all this stuff. I go and create a design and the size I use is custom size. And what size am I going to use, guys? Can you guess? What size? Have a guess. No one's guessing. No one's guessing. All right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to put 1920 by 1080. That's the size you want to, if you, anything from this lesson, remember that, right? Just remember that. So 1920 by 1080, because it's HD size, um, this is for myself. If I'm doing it for print, if I was producing something like an ebook or anything like that, then it's different. Maybe I would do it like A4 size or whatever size I wanted for my my ebook or whatever I'm trying to do or my Kindle book or whatever. Then I would produce it for that size. But because this is for my own stuff, I'm just going to keep my life easy and just do it 1920 by 1080. It also means that if I create something and want to put it into a video, guess what, guys? It's at the right size. It's 1920 by 1080. I can put it straight into my video while I'm editing it, and it will be the right size. And this uh, is what we do with all of the stuff that we produce for you. I'm just going to show you a folder now of some of the lives that we have. This is my folder structure for uh, Zenla. So like a day with Zenla, for instance, we have my little logo there. If you check the size of that logo, uh, if I hover over it, 
1920 by 1080. So all my stuff that I produce inside here for any of the training that I do um, is that side. So we've got a live build with Zendler in here. And you can see that if I hover over this, you can see 1920 by 1080. So I'm using that same size. This was produced, this could be produced out from Canva. It wasn't, I produced it out from Photoshop, but the size is the thing that is important. So you'll notice that we do it. We don't just tell you that that's what you should do is that's what we do ourselves. So put 1920 by 1080 and click create new design. So when you create a new design, you'll have a nice blank sheet like this and you will have lots of options on the side you can upload images if you already have them to drop them in there so if i click to upload an image i go um, upload media and then i maybe i'll choose my little dog that i've got there he'll load chuck him into here and drag him out and there he is and that could be used as a course card so if I was creating a course, I could have that as my course card and I could put text over the top uh, because it's, uh, sorry guys. Right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's jump in, did it again. That's, right, I'm gonna, um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna unmute so you guys can shout. I normally unmute you all. Right, okay, so you can come on, you can come on. Where did I miss you? We can't see your screen. Right, so you saw, you saw my folders. Didn't see my folder, did you? <laughs> right okay sorry um let me go and uh, just quickly recap i always do this every every now and again you'll get this happen i wish that you know the thing about i hate about zoom is i wish that the your heads or a little bit more prominent on the side it sort of reduces it down to three in the corner and if i'm doing a presentation on on because i have two monitors set up it's very hard to look across so definitely, um, definitely don't do what I do. <laughs> right. So yeah, like I was saying, like what we do for ours is this 1920 by 1080. So if you look at um, some of the stuff that we're doing, like the live builds, um, you'll see if I hover over this, it's 1920 by 1080. You see, so we we do that ourselves in all these things we do. Like if I've got a day with Zenler, if I hover over that, you're going to see 1920 by 1080. So this is our key size. Now I'm not sure, guys, if you saw me actually create the folder, the file. Did you? Did you see me create this? Put the 1920 in 1080. You did. All right. So you didn't see me upload it. So I'm just going to go in and delete this out. So let me go and trash this. And yeah, to upload the media into this page, we're just going to go upload media. We're going to find the media we want to use. We're going to click open. And once it's uploaded, we're going to drag it across into here. And if you do like that, that's when you do that and it snaps that what that means is that it's creating it as a background image. OK, it snaps in. If you release it when it's here, it's now just sitting on its own and you can grab it and sort of do this. Yeah. And if you right hand click, you can actually set set the image as a background. So you might want to set it as a background. You might not. And you can change the order of this stuff. So this because I've set this at 1920 by 1080, this is now the perfect size to be used in videos. So maybe I could use it at the beginning of my video. I could put some text in there and use it at the beginning of my video. Um, if I got the if I've got a course produced, I could use it for a course. So if I want to create a course card for this, and I'm going to be jumping back into that course that I set up earlier to show you. Uh, if I go to text here, I can add a heading here, and I can go and call this um, uh, what should I call it? Anxiety. set that there change the color and i can go and change the font type if i want to so you know whatever i like to use not very clear font but like that all right it doesn't matter uh, <laughs> i can get carried on so i can take this and i could use this so i could also if i wanted to increase the size of this as well so i'm going to go in and increase the size 
like something like that. I'm also going to then, uh, and this is a little tip for you. If you click off and you click on and you hold the alt key on the keyboard. So I'm holding the left mouse button on this little piece. And then I'm going to hold the alt key. Okay, so click, hold the alt key, drag up, and you can create a copy. Now this can be really handy. So I can go in here and change this to a light. And I can even put something in here. Put it down there. I could go in there and change the color if I wanted to. Doesn't look very good. I'll leave it. That'll be fine. Okay, so I've now created a design there straight inside Canva. I've used a custom image that I output from Pix Pixabay, took it into Pixlr, added a little bit of flashy stuff, brought it into Canva, set my size 1920 1080, added a little bit of text from the side, and now I can output this and use it as a course card. So if I go to download, um, it's going to say file type, always download as a JPEG. Okay. Um, keep that size. You can resize inside here, but it's 1920 by 1080. Um, for the quality of the image, I always, when I'm outputting, have it on 100% because the Zen the system will optimize it when you're brought into the system. So always put that on 100%. Now, when I click download, it will save that in my downloads folder. There it is. And I will be able to take that. It's in my downloads folder. There. There it is. And I can go and put that straight into the course. So that course that I had set up, where is it? There it is. That's the course. Let's go and put it in there. It's asking for a size of 860 by 480. Now we're going to upload our one. So I'm going to go change. I'm going to go and find that image, which is in my downloads folder. There it is. I'm going to click open. It's going to show a little crop line. But if I put this in the corner here, just dragging with my left mouse button, and then I drag this out, you're going to see that it fits perfectly because it's in the same pro, it's in the same ratio. So you can do it at 1920 much bigger. And that way you can still, you can use it for your HD videos and you could use it for this as well. Now, also, if you're shooting 4K videos, use the same size that you would use for 4K and you could, it will also be in the same ratio. So one size fits all. And I use 1920 by 1080 for also images inside my site as well. So I stick with that for big background images. I use in, you know, I'll download at least, um, you know, to sort of 6,000 in um, Pixabay or the biggest size Pixabay gives me. So I click crop and save. And now I've got a beautiful course card in there that's been generated from Canva. So let's have a look now at creating a quick logo inside here as well. So I'm going to do the same thing. This also, by the way, this is now a template. So if later on I decide that I want to do another training course and I maybe I want to use a different image, then I could do that. So I'm going to show you quickly how you can create some sort of covering two things here. I'm just watching the time as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click duplicate page. It's going to give me a duplicate. I'm going to come in here and we're going to call this. Um, let's call it toilet training for dogs. OK, so now uh, instead of going to Pixabay and looking for image, I'm going to use an image that I can pull straight out of Canva because you Canva also has images. But if you're using the free version, they're not all free. Some of them are free and some of them are premium. So you need to have the pro. Let's just see. I'm going to put dog in here and I have see that's pro. I can't get that without being a paid member. So there are going to there's a free one. Uh, that's a free. Oh, that's a pro one. That's a free one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this background away. I'm going to right hand click and I'm going to go to attach image and then I'm going to delete it out. Then I'm going to take this free one and I'm going to drag it in and bang. We're in there now. You can't read this where it says dogs. So I want to put an overlay behind it. So I can do that inside Canva. I can go to elements. I'm going to grab a square, which is like here. I'm going to drag this across onto here. And then I'm going to drag this out. It'll all be clear in a second. I'm going to drag the side, covering everything. And I can go up here, transparency. 
and I can also change the color. So let's change it to a black. Let's click in here and just choose that corner there. Jump back into here, back to transparency. And let's just alter that down like that. There you go. So now I've created this brand bit. I can change this if I wanted to. Maybe I want to go into a different color, like a, a kind of greeny color for this one. And then I need to adjust where that is. So if we go into there. And there we go. I've got a brand new card. Now, of course, you can still upload a card. So how do I get this one out to put into a course? Well, I can click the download. Now, remember, I've already downloaded the page one. So I don't want to really download one and two images. I just need two. So if you go into the JPEG here, we're going to keep all this size. I can put this to 100. And where it says select a page, I'm going to go down here. And I'm just going to select this page, page two. I'm going to click done. It's going to say page two. And I'm going to click download. Now, if you want to select all of the pages, you can click there and it will download all of the pages in one go. But we don't want to do that. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to click download. So that will now download that new image into my folder. There it is. And there it is there. So I'm using this as a template. So notice how quick you can speed up uh, reproduction of things that you've done as a template. So now, of course, I can go into the course and I could change this image for the new one, which is that one there. Click open, put that in the corner, drag that to the side, click crop and save. And now I've got a brand new image in there. Uh, and that's how quick you can do it. So using Canva as a template generator is a really good idea. So moving on from that, let's create a logo in here. And then I'm going to show you how to remove the background from it because this is something that we're going to need to do inside our holding page. As soon as we've done this, we can then move into creating a holding page, which is going to take a matter of minutes. So I'm going to go back to Canva account again, and I'm going to go in here, choose 1920 by 1080. I'm going to go create new design, and we're going to choose some text. I'm going to do it something like what I've already done. So I'm going to go into text here. I'm going to grab a text in here. And I'm going to put in good, and then I'm going to choose a font, um, a color, and the font. I'm pretty much going to leave the font. I think I'm going to put this on like 200. Ooh, it's too big. 200 here. So something like that. And then I'm going to choose another one here, and I'm going to put. Doggy there, that one to about 350, too much. And then I want to choose a font that's going to work. Uh, yeah, you can spend time doing this, guys. I can't remember the font I used. It had a nice round O. Okay, that'll do. All right, so what I'm going to do now for the O is I'm going to put a little space in there. And then I'm going to bring this down by dragging the edge. This is just to give you an idea. So I could change that to a different font if. Hmm. Don't mind that. Right, let's see how the um, G is going over the top of the D. If I want to bring this to the front, what's happening? Because I created this bit after this bit, it stacked it in order, a bit like pixel r does so if i want to put this good over the top of the doggy i can right hand click and i can go bring forwards and there you go it's now over the top so that could work for you um that ha you can do that in every part of this as well like if you put an image in there if you right hand click you can send it back or you can send it forwards 
So that's a kind of top tip for you. Right, for this middle area, I'm going to create a little, I know there's a paw in here, so I'm going to create a circle for Doggy as a little paw print, which is what I did in that branding kit. So I'm going to type in here under elements, I think it's elements, I'm going to type in here paw, and we have this little paw. Well, some of these are some of these are free, some of them are pro. I could put the little dog in. Um, that's free. Which one? Doesn't really matter. Let's choose. Let's choose that one. Okay. There it is. Okay. I'm going to leave that there. Now I'm going to grab. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to choose a circle. There's the circle. I'm going to drag the circle in. And maybe I'll make that into that pink color. And maybe I'll make this white. Okay, now if I bring it over the top, you can't see it. So I'm gonna right hand click it. I'm gonna go bring to front. Now when I drag it over, I can see it. So I'm gonna reduce it down and just put it into here. Okay, now it's a bit of a pain like having these separate. I'd like them to be grouped because if I move this, then I'll move, I won't move that. So if you just drag over the two of these, so they're both selected, you can actually click group here. And now what that means is they'll move together which is a lot easier. So I can put that in there and I quite like it overlapping, but I'm gonna do it more to the side. I can use my arrow keys as well. And you can put it in there. And there we go. We've created a little logo. So you can have fun with this stuff. You can play around, choose different fonts and you know, you don't need a designer. You can just go in and do stuff yourself. So there we have our design. So I'm gonna select it all and I'm gonna drag it from the corner, make it a bit bigger. And then I'm gonna output it. And you're gonna see the problem that we're gonna get with this free version of Canva. So let's go and output this. So I'm gonna click download. Ideally, I'd like to download this as a PNG and that would allow me to do a transparent background, which I don't think we have in the free version. So, but I'm gonna pretend that I, you know, that I have the free version and I can't have a transparent background. So then I would be probably downloading as a JPEG and I'm gonna do that now. So I'm gonna download that as a JPEG, keep the size the same, quality 100, and I'm gonna click download. That's gonna download into my download folder. I'm gonna jump into PixelR and I'm gonna to go to file, open image, and I'm gonna find that file, there it is. I'm gonna click open there. So we have our image and then I'm gonna to go to what's called the magic wand. So there's a little magic wand here and I'm gonna click inside here and you're gonna see what you get is what we call marching ants. And this is the selection. So everything inside of this selection is selected so I can do things with it. So if I was to hit the backspace, I could delete it out. So quickly, I have now created a transparent background. So if I now just select these bits in here, uh, you can go and cut those out. Um, it's not perfect, but it does what you need it to do. Now I've cut all that out there. You see, and now I can output this. So I can first of all crop it. So I'm gonna to go to my little crop. Remember this is your logo. So I've got a little crop tool there. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna crop this. So I'm gonna crop that there. I'm gonna go there and pull this in there. And that will be cropped. Oop, sorry put it in there, put it in there and hit enter on the keyboard. And there we go. So now I've cropped this to the size. So I've gone all the way around it closely. So now I'm gonna export that out. So if I go to file and I go to export now, not save, I'm going to export. I'm gonna quick export page as a PNG file. And that's gonna save that alpha then. So I'm gonna then go into my folder, dog training images, Actually, this is a logo, so I'm gonna put it into the logo. 
So I've got logo asset and I'm going to leave that in there. I don't need JPEG there, just save the name. So I just want it .png and I'll call it. Click save. All right. So now I've saved it. So that was the one that I exported from Canva. It's got the white background. And I want to show you the difference between the, between the two of them when I upload them. So I'm just going to put that on the desktop for now. I'm going to jump back into the site and I'm now going to come down here, add an element, and I'm going to add an image in here. And we're going to upload that new one. So I've got the original one that we exported from Canva. And you're going to see that that's got a black, that's got a background there. I'll just do a little bit of cropping whilst I'm in here. Okay, crop and upload. It's got a background behind it. And then we've got our new one that's cut out. So I can go into image again, upload, and find that image, which was in logos. There it is. Click open. Uh, we're going to upload without crop in this case, and this will be a bit bigger. There we go. So we've got that cut out. So that's how you could quickly cut out. So if you've got a free, if you've got the free version of Canva, you could do that, do it that way. You'll have to take it into pixel art to cut it out. If you've got the pro version, then I think you can output, um, well, you can output it without a background. You can do it with a transparent. So obviously the logo would never be this kind of big. So you'd probably be having it down to about that size, which is going to be fine, which this is going to bring us on to setting up our holding page now. So inside the site that we've got at the moment, you can see that this is the site we've got. We still want to work on it and we don't really want people to have access to all this stuff. So it's going to be really good for us to set up a holding page so we can still work on our site and not have to worry about people seeing any stuff while we're working on things. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We've got enough assets now to be able to create a holding page. I've got those two assets that were created. I've got the logo and I've got that background. So I'm going to just um, come out of this. So I think you guys, are you guys happy with the training on Canva? Do you understand it? Right, so I've got a few questions. Oh, you've got it, right, okay. Um, remember there's a video after this on media creation that gets a lot more involved in these sort of things but like to create that branding sheet you could see you could do exactly the same check out the workshop I did with Mina and I'll put that in there as well because I talk about setting up a branding sheet in there and how you can set up the colors and things it's really easy um, Canva is amazing you can do some really good things and it's really good for people that don't use like pro packages so um, definitely play around with it so in the meantime, I'm going to jump in and set up a holding page, which is going to be a big thing for you guys, because it means you don't have to worry about your site at this stage. And you can just relax a bit and go, oh, it's, I know it's online, but I've got this page set up. But what we want to do is we want to create a page that's going to tell people a little bit about what you're doing. And we also want people to be able to sign up. OK, so we're going to do that now. So. I'm going to come into the site. Let me just close this down and I'll leave this page because I think we'll start from scratch and build a page. So let me just come in and just delete this fake course that I set up because we're not on course creation yet. Oops. It, um, there's a little thing comes up, says delete. You need to put type delete me because people were deleting their courses and then they were going, oh, I want my course back. And uh, so we put this little thing in there, stopping uh, people from deleting things. So let's go to um, site. Let's go to our pages. So our pages are all in here. This is that mess about page that we created. So I'm going to delete that mess, page, mess about page out for now, uh, just so we can start nice and fresh with this stuff. And what we want to do is we want to create a new home page for both logged in and logged out users so that nobody can see all the pages in your site. Now, I personally unpublish all of the pages in my site uh, when I'm working on them. So there's no possible way of people finding things. So if you want to do that, you can do it. Uh, to unpublish pages in your site, you can go into the settings here and you can check this and you can click update. 
and I go through all of these pages and I unpublish them. Uh, you can still view them when you're logged in, because like even though this is unpublished, let me just show you. I'm going to go down to our home page and I'm going to unpublish that. All right. No, I can't because it's set as my home page. All right, it's okay. Let's just choose like uh, one of these pages, like the support page. If I look at this page, let's go into incognito. This is the way that we test. We go into, we're using Chrome, it's our default browser. We click the little three dots and we go down to new incognito window. And inside there, I click this, I type, I put the URL. You can see this page exists. It is possible that Google might find this page. Okay, for any pages that are published, it's possible that Google might find it. So we want to unpublish it. So I'm going to close that and then I'm going to click in here and I'm going to click publish page, turn that off, click update. Okay, let's go to that page now in incognito. So I'll copy it, click the three dots, go into incognito and click here. Oops, page cannot be found. People will not find this page. They will not see, oops, page cannot be found because Google will not even index it. So none of the search engines, if it doesn't exist and it's unpublished, none of the search engines will index it. Um, if it is indexed, it's only because it's indexed it before you've unpublished the page and it's just cached on their system. Eventually, it will drop out of the search engines. So this is important to know about. And it's actually I was saying to people when I was doing the previous live that I wasn't saying unpublish the pages and things. I was just saying, oh, you can just create this new home page for logged in, logged out users. But, you know, things develop. And I was thinking actually from a um, indexing point of view it's really important that you do that at this stage and we will be talking when we get into the marketing part of the course we will be talking more about this so it's just for you to know now if it's unpublished it's not going to show so if it's a page that you want people to see then you can of course you can leave it un you can leave it published but just for your benefit now you can unpublish all of the pages and you cannot unpublish the login page if you could it means you would not be able to log into your admin, all right? So you wouldn't want that to be um, to be not accessible by you. Um, so don't worry, people can't register for your site because you're unpublishing all of the other pages. So if I was you, and it's not, I'm not saying you have to do this, but if if I was you, I would go through my whole site before I, because I haven't created it yet, and I would unpublish all of the pages. So there's not too many. You can just run through them. We can still, as an admin, we can still view these pages. You know, it's like this is an unpublished page here, um, this, unsub this unsubscribe page here. So I could view this though and click in here and you'll see that I can see the page perfectly fine. That's because I'm admin, I'm logged in as an admin user. So I can still go into those pages. I can still edit them. I can still click around the site with any navigation I've built. It doesn't affect me as the admin creating my site. It stops people who are looking at my site from viewing the content, all right? So that's all it does. So if I was you, I would go through and I would turn all these off. When you get through, you're gonna go down and you're gonna to get to the login page and you're gonna click and try to unpublish that. There's not gonna be a way of doing that in there. And this is because this is a login for your site, as I mentioned. So that's the only page you cannot unpublish. You won't be able to unpublish the home page because it's set as the home page, all right? But you will after. So let's create our landing page now. Let's get straight into it. Make sure you've unpublished the pages. Let's click add page. We're not going to have a navigation at the top. We're not gonna have a footer navigation. We just want a content page in there. If I show you an example of um, something I'm doing, um, you'll know exactly what I mean. This is what I've set up on my site. I'm still creating my site. It's going well, but it's not ready to launch yet. So in the meantime, I've got a page set up where people can come into, enter there. If they're interested in what I'm doing, they can put their name in here, their email. And what's even more important about this is that I can get into my Facebook group and I can say, look, guys, I'm bringing out a new course. If you want to register your interest, jump into this page and put your name and your email. And then I can let you know when it's all going. So I can give it out. 
you know, I could I could produce a business card and say, look, if you're interested in what I'm doing, here we go. They come on there, enter their name, and um, I've got them. So I haven't done any. I don't have to have done any work on the site. I've just got this holding page, and I've got two because there's two areas to this particular site. So I've got two places. If they're interested in this particular section of the site, they can. If they're interested in this, they can as well. Okay, all done in Zendla. So this is what we're going to be doing right now. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go make sure we've got a blank page. We can call it something like, um, let's call it dog training waiting page. Okay, something like that. And then I'll put that in there. So I, I have to put, I have to go dog all lowercase hyphen training. You need a hyphen. You can't put spaces between these things. Dog training waiting page or let's change this waiting list okay blank page we'll publish it visible to all users okay not just logged in users and we're going to click add okay this is going to give us the blank page it's going to add a header it's going to add a footer i'm going to delete them out we don't need them and then we'll get something like this where I haven't got a footer, I haven't got a header. Great. So header up here where I'm creating, I'm going to delete that out. Click delete. Um, if you want to leave your terms and conditions, you could if you wanted to, but I delete it all out and just taking people's um, emails. So first thing I'm going to do, that leaves me with just an empty block. Right. So let's go and set something up. Now, I'm not going to spend hours doing this. You know, you'll be working for your branding sheet for colors and all that stuff. I'm going to use some of these assets that we've used today. So I'm going to go into the gear icon. I'm going to set the background image for this. And I'm going to show you a few other things with this. I'm going to choose this one here. I quite like it. It looks colorful. Uh, you'll notice with the empty block, you have this little bit of the bottom and top, and you can see these little arrows appear, double arrows. That allows you, if you click with the left mouse button and drag, you can make that area bigger, like that. Yeah, so I've made that area bigger. Uh, you can also close it back up again as well. So let's just put it in there. And now, um, and also while I'm at it, I just want to show you something. If I go into the settings for this background image, you're going to see that there's something that says background image position. So you can set where that image is inside of here. So at the moment, I've got it top left. If I put it, um, I tend to use centers. So I use center, center. You're going to see it'll pop up. And that's because that space, the image is bigger than that space. So it's saying, where do you want it? You know, where do you want it? So it gives you that position from those places. So if you did bottom center, it would be right down there. So you've got a bit of adjustment that you can do in there. Top center there, you know. Um, yeah, I'll leave it top center. OK, so now I'm going to create my title for my page. So you would have set all your uh, so I'm going to put a row in there. Nothing special here, just one row. And inside that row, you guys know about the row. So this is a blue block. This is a main containing block. And then inside it, we put a row. And then inside that, we put whatever we're going to put like elements and they'll be red. Uh, sometimes they might be purple if they're a form, but you'll see. But that's the main thing is that blue block inside a blue block goes a green block inside a green block goes a red block. If one of you guys can do a rhyme for that, that would be really good because then maybe I can put a rhyme out for people to remember. <laughs> so uh, let's go in and add an element. I'm going to go into uh, heading for this and I'm going to go and this is where you can have fun. If you guys are thinking, what font do I use? What colors do I use? You can 
play around with this page. And I think I said to you last week that you should play around with that test page and find the colors that you want to use the font. So hopefully you should have all of that now and you know what to use. So I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with Montserrat for now for the sake of this. And I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to change this size to like 55 and then I'm going to go in here. And does training. This should be something that's very catchy what you're doing in here because this is this is the main thing people are going to see. So I'm going to go next and we're going to add something else. I'm sure guys you can do better than this. I'm going to come into this H2 heading this time. And there's a reason why I'm using H1, H2, and then eventually body text. It's because if the search engines look at it, they look at H1 headings. Get your pen and paper ready for this bit. This is marketing, but I'm telling you now, just so you're aware. H1 headings take priority over H2 headings. H2 headings take priority over what's called H3 headings, so on, so on. And then it goes down to what's called body or paragraph text, which is normal text. So that's the reason why in every title of my page, I make it an H1 heading. And then any subtitles, I always make H2 headings. And then I use my body text. Right? This is a search engine specific thing. It doesn't mean in designing in Zendler, you could use a paragraph text and you could make the text the same size. You could make it 55 pixels and change it and make it look exactly like an H1, but it's not, okay? So if you're using like for headings and those things, one heading per page, one H1 per page, any other headings you've got in the page use H2, and then for any text use paragraph text. That's as much jargon as I'm gonna get into at this stage. So let's go in here and choose slight gray. Then sign up for our subscription. And then I think I'll put one more thing. Um, Let's put some text. You need to be telling people what it's about on this page because there's not much information. So I need to be saying what I actually address. Well, not what I, but what the Phantom Company would address. So I'm gonna choose 20 and probably Something like that, that looks all right. Um, not happy with that, I'm gonna move that up a little bit. So the dog's still looking at this area. And now what I wanna do is I wanna put a form to capture leads into my site. So again, again in Zenlite, it's really easy to add a form in here. I'm going to just click this box and I'm gonna go down to add an element. And then when the little box opens up, I'm gonna go down to form here. So inside the form, I'm gonna click form here and it's gonna add a form into here for me straight away. So let's go and change this button because I don't like the look of it. So we're gonna go over to the gear icon as we normally do. We're gonna go over to design. It's gonna give us some options in here. I think I'm gonna choose this kind of rounded one and I'm gonna go into the style for that. And like everything else, I think I'm just gonna make it white. So let's go into the gear settings, going to style, come down here. 
we're going to choose text color white and border color white. We're going to choose border thickness. That's the thickness of that band that runs around. I'm going to choose five. You're going to see it goes thicker. And I don't want that button to be right the way across. So you can see it says width. I'm just going to go normal. And I also want to change what it says in there. So I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go sign up for or launch. I don't know, something like that. Um, and that will do. So that is, a, that is a simple form that is set up. What that form is capturing is someone's name, someone's email address. Now, really important, guys, don't go dragging these things around. You're going to see if I hover over, there's a little purple box that comes up. Do you notice that purple box needs to go around all of your form assets? So if you decide to create a new field in here, because, for instance, you want to take someone's phone number, um, then you're going to need to make sure it's in this box. So if I was to take someone's phone number, I've asked for their name. Maybe I want to ask for their last name. So if I go over to here, I can clone this and you're going to see that it's going to clone another one here. So now if I click that little field here, we're going to check what it says. So if you look over here, is going to say enter your name. So it's going to input type is going to go into the first name field. So I would be putting something like here just to make it crystal clear. You can put whatever you like in here. First name. Okay, now this one is also going to say first name and I need to change it so it goes into the last name field. So we come into here and click this input type and I'm going to go last name. And then I'm going to put in here. Last name. OK, and if you want it required, you can click here to make it required. So the most important one and it should be required, I think, is the email. So inside the email here, I'm going to make sure this is a required field. The input type is going into the email area. So notice all of the inputs we have. We could take someone's, um, you can use custom. We're going to get into forms and funnels later in the workshops. We're just doing a simple form to capture leads at the moment. But you can take people's phone, zip code, state, city, custom, whatever you like, email, first name, last name. So you can take all this information in these forms by setting it up. Generally, I don't like to set up more than two. I like to make it as easy as possible. So I'm going to delete that one out. And we're going to delete it. And just have it as this. Now, the most important part after you set up your form fields and you've made sure that all of the boxes, including the submit box, are all in this little purple box, is the submit button. So we're going to go into the settings for the submit button. And we're going to check those out. So we can change the way it looks inside style. If we go into settings, you've got the text, sign up for launch. We've also got the action. We want to make sure that it is on submit form. Do not put it on go to link, open pop up, or any of that stuff. You just want to make sure it's submitting a form. A lot of people I've seen, again, on the Facebook group, put things like click um go to link and then they're like why haven't i collected people's emails it doesn't work it's because they haven't put submit form we want to submit it as a form so the next thing i want to do and what i like to do with these kind of pages is actually tag people coming in because when they come in they're going to come in as leads and later on i might have multiple forms connected in different areas um, such as this one here I actually have a tag in here on this one called bio um, mech. So I know it's coming as the bio mech. And I have one on this one tagged in as bio Mac. So I know that they're interested in the Mac. Because they come in as leads, I want to be able to filter them later to send emails to people that were interested in Machina or in Mechanica. 
And so I tagged them coming in. So it adds a little tag. You're going to see that now. So inside here, we have this tag field. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to just put in here waiting. And then I'm going to hit the enter button. OK, now, if it creates an extra little thing, sometimes it does just delete that out. Don't worry about it. OK, now this is set up, but it would be really nice if after they've hit the submit button that they went to a thank you page. So they're told. So we're going to be doing that as well. And that's with the post submit action. Now, we haven't set up a thank you page yet. So we're going to be doing that in a second and we're going to base it on this page. So next thing left for me to do is just to click save. So I'm going to save that now, and that's my page saved. And then I'm going to set the thank you page up, and then I'm going to connect this for to the home page. So guys, SEO, uh, little tip, just write a little bit of a description about your site, about the page, or what your course is. Inside MetaWords, just put a few keywords. So let me just give you a demonstration. I'm not, this is marketing, so I'm not gonna get deep into this. So, um, so I'm gonna put something like sign up for my dog training courses and help your dogs overcome anxiety and stress something like that. Okay, that's all you need to do. Make sure you spelt it right as well. Um, and then inside of, I uh, haven't spelled that right, don't worry. So in uh, meta keywords, I'm gonna put in there something like dog uh, stress. Then I'm gonna put a comma. Then I'm gonna put something like dog anxiety, okay? and something like dog training. So I'm putting a comma, then I'm putting the next word. Now, if you have an image to go with this as well, you wanna put that in there. So this is what it's gonna display in a social media post, okay? If you, if you posted this to your Facebook group, this is what they're gonna see. Or if you did it as an advert on Google or something. So for social image, I wanna come in and I wanna grab um, one of my images that I've used. So if I click in here, you're going to see our little window come up. Maybe I'll use that. So there he is. That's my little social image. So definitely do that and try and get in a habit of doing it. When you get when we get into the marketing side of the course, um, it's going to be really good that you're used to kind of writing meta descriptions and, and meta keywords. And these, what you're doing here is this is what shows on social posts, and it's also what shows. Um, it's also how Google will look at your page. They'll look at what you've put in the title inside the SEO, and they'll look at what you've put in the meta descriptions, and they'll also look at the keywords. So they'll be saying, this site is focusing on dogs with stress, dogs with anxiety, dogs with, that need training. And then it will then put that in search results based on someone searching. I need, a, I need help with my dog is always stressed, then you would pop up in that area because it's, it's related to that. So that's how it works, all right? A quick SEO 101. So I'm gonna click done to that. And that's now done and I should be able to save that. Okay, so last thing I wanna do is set up a thank you page. So I'm gonna leave this editor open. I'm gonna jump back to my pages and where I've got this, this is the page that we're editing. I'm going to clone this page and I'm going to call it a thank you. So I'm going to go into here now. That's the copy of the page. I'm going to go into the little gear icon. Just made a copy, dog waiting list. Let's just call it dog training and call it thank you. And then I'm going to come into here. Uh, thank you. And then we're going to click update. I'm going to open this page. So I've got this one already open. I'm going to open this one uh, now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put thank you in here. Thank you for signing up, whatever. And we can then tie it to that button that we have inside this page. So I don't need to form. I'm going to get rid of that.
just put thank you. That'll do, and click save. Uh, again, SEO this page for the sake of speed, I'm not going to, but jump back to here. Now I've got this page, so I've still got this one open. And now this is my thank you page. Because you guys are not familiar with this, it's a good idea just to preview it, just to check that it's the right page. Ah, uh, that is the right page. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get grab this URL, I always, some people grab the whole URL. Personally, I just grab the forward slash. So from the end of the domain name, that's .com, there will always be a forward slash. Notice on here, there's always a forward slash after the name of the site. Make sure that you just grab the forward slash and everything after it. So where it says demo.newzenda.com, after that M, I grab all that's after it. So if I was grabbing this one, I would grab this. If I was grabbing this one, I'd grab this. So I'm grabbing from the forward slash. This is what's called a relative link. And because it's an internal page in the site, it will find it, okay? We don't do this for external sites. If you're sending people to your YouTube channel, Facebook page, or any other page, or you're sending an email out, you would give them the whole link. This is purely for links inside the site itself, like an internal structure. So we're grabbing forward slash dog, doo -doo -doo -doo, and we're going to put that into the post submit action. So post submit action for a button is what happens after someone's clicked the button. So we're going to settings. Uh, we can see here post submit action. I'm going to go down here, I'm going to go, go to link, and then we're going to put that link in there. There it is. And I'm going to click save. So this page now will capture people first name, last name, it will tag them when they come in with waiting. And it will also then after they click the button, take them to the thank you page. So all we've got to do now is hook this up to our home page. So this is our home page at the moment. And of course, we unpublished all the pages probably. So let's go and set this as our home page. So all you need to do is come now to the home page. Just remember what the name of this pages that you're going to set them to it's called waiting list waiting list all right go to home page we're going to click in here and you can see that we've got the page there waiting list so i'm going to set that for logged out users we're also going to set it for logged in users because currently nobody's coming into the site so waiting list and i'm going to click save right let's have a look at our site now and let's test it out. At the moment, if I go to people down here, um, apart from me and Rakesh who are admin, we have nobody in the site. So I'm gonna go into incognito now and test it. So look at it now, that's our page. This is our brand new holding page. People can't go anywhere else. All the other pages have been unpublished. So I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna test this. So I'm gonna call myself um, John. And let's go and choose put in here, Zenda free. Okay. And then I'm going to click sign up for launch. So there we go. So it's took us straight to the thank you page. So it's working. So let's have a look in the system now and check that we're actually in there. So I'm going to go down to leads and there we are. And look, I'm tagged tagged for waiting and my role is lead so now that page now my site is working it's it means i can go into my site pages and i can merrily cause a mess in there create whatever i like and when i've got it all ready i can then change that over from the original home page which is down there i can change this over to the home page to make the site active like that you know so that is the whole point of this workshop. So hopefully that's been of use to you. You might need to rewatch a few bits of this, but setting that form up, you know, creating a page like this where you can get people into your site before you finished it.
can be really, really good because it means that you can market this. It means that you can start to talk about it. And, and the other thing about it is when people start coming in, if you start to get people actually coming in there as leads, you'll start to, uh, it will motivate you to get on with it. You know, because we've got this thing where our lives are busy and we're like, oh, I'll get to that tomorrow. Oh, that I need to do that. You know, I know Mina's been holding off for a long time. Now she's focused on, on what she's doing. Um, so she's getting on to all the lives. And it's this real need. If you get people come in there, you realize that that's money. You know, if you've got two, three hundred people in there on your waiting list, they want something. And as soon as you've produced it and you say, look, here it is now, then you're going to get a big flash of money come in on that. Um, I'm doing the same with this. I've already got people that buy my courses. So I will send them across to these pages and then they will fill it out and I'll contact them. And I know that I'll get a big rate of sales once I release one course into each section. So that's my plan because it's like an instant thing that it would just it would just generate. But even if you haven't got an email list of people or anything, it just means you've got somewhere to send some people if, if they're interested. You know, we do Wow Wednesdays on our Facebook group. If you set up this holding page, you can put it on the Wow Wednesday on there and get people's opinion and get people talking about it as well. You know, I've recommended people based off of some of the sites I've seen and, I, and I've talked to them and I've recommended to other people, not associated with Zen, but to other people doing stuff. So uh, it works, you know, spread the word and you put it out there. But if you've got a site that isn't finished, then you've got nothing to show, you know, apart from a site that's a bit messy because you haven't finished it. So by setting up this quick holding page, you give a professional image across straight away. And it doesn't matter what you're doing behind the scenes because people won't see it. So that is it for this week, I think. So I'm going to check. Right, anyone want to come on live and um, ask any questions? Because there is quite a lot of chat here. I don't generally look at the chat too much just because I'm trying to do the presentation. Anyone want to? Elizabeth, you got your hand up. <laughs> oh, you didn't mean to. <laughs> All right. OK, so no questions. David, it's Heather speaking. Sorry. Hi, Heather. Um, hi, I just uh, want to reverse back. A while ago when you were in Canva, you said that we were to download JPEGs and for everything. So I was just wondering why, why you suggested that. Right. Um, okay. So why? Uh, it's, it's the most optimized image type. So remember I told you about .png files, they carry an extra channel called an alpha channel for cutting out. Yes. Well, even if you're not using um, a transparent background, if you download it as a PNG file, it's still carrying an alpha channel. It will still increase the size. So if you, if you don't need a transparent background, then, I mean, there's tons of different formats that you could use, you know, you could use GIF format. You know, there's JPEG, there's J JPEG, there's uh, an extended version of that, there's SVG, there's tons of different types. So not to confuse you, if you want something transparent, use PNG. If you just want something flat, use JPEG. And that's, that's it, I think. Um, right, any other questions? I'm gonna have a quick look. Oh, with 720, there isn't that many questions. So you are now, right, I can't say, da, 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 da. right, I think we're all right. So yeah, Heather, I see your question about JPEG. So hopefully that's clear for you. So are you downloading images for Canva into your computer or into Zenla Asset? No, this is my computer. So when you saw my downloads folder, I'm downloading it directly on my computer. This is good for a few reasons. One is I've got access to it. I always back my stuff up. Guys, if you're creating coursework, back up all your stuff, put it onto an external disk 
Um, I've got a few, I probably won't reach, but I've got tons of um, discs, I've got, you know, I've got, I've got like tons of like memory sticks and things that I put stuff on and I have about four backup um, drives and the actual computer itself and my stuff runs to backup each day and cloud as well. So I, but I'm really anal with this stuff, you know, I start, I do two backups. Um, I've got one on my machine, I do two, two backups, one to take, one to drive. And then I also um, back up to the cloud as well. <laughs> Only because I have lost stuff in the past. So I'm kind of like really on backing up. Don't just put it on a computer. If you've done a ton of work, it, the, at the minimum, buy a little drive and put it on an external drive. So keep it on the computer and then every maybe every month, copy that across to the drive. So you've got a copy of it. Because if you lose that stuff, you will be killing yourselves. <laughs> you know, because you might want to reuse it and those sort of things. So backups are really important. So yeah, download it all to your computer, back it up. Of course, you know, you can put it on the Zender system as well. And uh, yes, I have Canva Pro. Uh, yeah, so if you've got Canva Pro, you'll be able to export straight out with a transparent background. Right, so how many metas can I have in a post? Um, okay, so for the meta descriptions for SEO, I would not go, at this stage, don't do more than 10. Okay, you don't need to really. It's more important that they're accurate. A lot of people do too many trying oh oh i'll do every single word that people are going to ever type into google and then they wonder why they're not appearing on the search engines it can actually be detrimental to do that so stick to under 10 i do normally five works for me is there a funnel for options including thank you pages and connecting to system emails um sorry judy i don't understand that so is there a funnel for, we have marketing funnels. So yeah, and there's different options and you can send people to different thank you pages. You know, some people, if they're going into a marketing funnel, we're not onto that yet. Uh, you can send them straight to a course to get them to buy the course. You could send them straight to a course with a link to a coupon as well. So there was a deduction if they'd done the marketing funnel or you can just, or you could send them to an ex external website. You can, you know, where I sent people to the thank you page, you don't have to send them to a thank you page on the site, you could send them to your Facebook group, if it's an open Facebook group, you know, you could send them where you want to, it's just as soon as they hit that button, they'll fire off to somewhere else, wherever you choose, it's up to you. Uh, can I create a link without Zenla name in it? Uh, I don't understand that. Can I create a link without Zenla name in it? Um, oh, are you talking about if you've got like that one, like I've got demo.newzenla.com. Um, if you're talking about that, then if you're using the pro and premium, then you'll have to set your custom domain. So whatever you like.com. It's like on my site, I've got Judy. Yeah, you're nodding. So you understand what I mean. So let me just share my screen again and I'll show you because this one you can see it says ZBrush biomechanica.newzenla.com. See that? That's a new Zenla URL. But I have this set up as a subdomain. So if I put in here zbrush.mojomojo.design, I've already set this up. So if I click that, that is my actual address. I was just showing you the thing. And so if you, that's how it works. So you need to set up your custom domain or your custom subdomain. Okay, I think that's, I think that's all right. Are you okay with that, Judy? Yeah, I think you're okay with that. Um, did you do, how about GDPR, how do you check box? So yeah, you could put a little check box in. Let me send some information on that. Mary, or you could make sure instead you could put, I mean, these you could put at the bottom of it, you could do like the GDPR. So it comes up on the, on the page. So I'll, um, I'll put that inside the extra bits. In fact, yeah, I think all the other questions that are coming in are related to little, these little kind of details. 
So what I'll do is I'll record a video and I'll put it under it with little questions that are coming up. So if you, you guys need anything answered, go into the course, write it in the community, and then I'll make sure it's in that week's session. So your goal this week, your homework assignment is to do that holding page. If you're still working in your site, unless your site's finished, if you're still working within your site, remember, unpublish those pages and set up that holding page so you can start capturing leads. And then you're safe knowing that, um, you know, you you can still work on your site and people aren't seeing an unfinished unfinished site. All right, are we OK? Assignment, create holding page so I can capture yeast. Yes. Yeah. So that's what you need to do. All good. So you're all good. Lots of you have turned up today. It's really good to see you all. And we've even got awesome dogs. So we're doing a dog training site. So Claire must be happy. <laughs> yeah, I chose dog training because dog training is a really good one because you're, you know, it features everything. Like some dog trainers want a membership site. Uh, other dog trainers want to actually be live and do live um, coaching and those kind of things. Um, so I thought this would be gr a great subject to pick. So initially, when I run my other workshops, I was doing a surfing site. And then for this one, we're now doing a dog training site. So because I think it's relatable to a lot of different other fields as well, like what we're trying to do. Uh, but of course, you know, if you've got a specific question or you want me to run a specific workshop, get on the community and just ask. And then I can slot that in. If enough of you like give the thumbs up, I can actually slot that in as a new workshop but we've still got a lot to cover and I don't want it to be too overwhelming. So homework for this week is set up that holding page so you can capture leads and you don't have to worry too much about your site at this stage. You can see I can create a really nice thing just using an image and overlay, a little bit of text and a form, and that's all you need to do. That's all I want you to do for this week. So with that said and done, I think we're running up to nearly two hours now. So I'm going to call it a day and um, let you guys uh, have a little bit of a rest. <laughs> and this video will go up inside the course um, tomorrow morning or later this afternoon. So guys, thank you very much for joining me today. And hopefully you've learned something. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah, you. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, David.